that it's okay that you don't like where you're at and that's perfectly fine. What matters is that you recognize that and you do something with it. What is going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today, what we're gonna be talking about is how to be more motivated in the gym or if you wanna get more motivated in the gym because um, a long time ago, one of the main video concepts my friend really wanted me to make, shout out to you if you're watching this homie, but he asked me to make a video on how to get more motivated to go to the gym. And this is something that seemed at least a little bit foreign to me when I thought about it because now I'm at the point to where I go to the gym like, I don't want to say every day because I don't go every single day, but all the days that I do go, it's not like I'm like, have to force myself to do it. I just want to do it and I do it. But a lot of people probably aren't like that. And I realized that there was a point at where, when I first started, where I had to make myself start going a lot because I wanted to be more consistent and get more results, but I had to make myself do it. It didn't just come naturally. And as you progress and go to the gym more frequently and stuff like that over time, you do learn to do that. So um, yeah, basically I just want to make this video, how to be more motivated when you're going to the gym and working out so that you can stay consistent and meet your goals. But again, hopefully this is helpful to you. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe for more, and let's get right into it. So how to have motivation to work out. The first thing is going to be something that I learned in psychology, which is called having intrinsic and extrinsic motivations or motivators. So motivation is just a very general term, but there's a specific kind that I learned again in psychology, which is intrinsic and extrinsic. An, an, an extrinsic motivator you can think of as external, outside of you. And then intrinsic is more of an internal thing. So intrinsic motivators to work out, an example would be, I'm in love with the process. I like actually going to the gym and getting the reps in and doing one more set and getting close to failure. I like going to the gym and pushing myself. An intrinsic motivator is a motivator that you have to do something because you enjoy and have motivation to do the process of it, not the result you get from it. An, ex an extrinsic motivator, for example, is doing something for the result that comes after it. So it may not be something that, you know, you get right away, but like, for example, a big extrinsic motivator for people to be famous on the internet is to make money or an extrinsic motivator to work out is because I want to get really big and, you know, attract all these you know, people or whatever. Um, but a big part of this, which I realized, is that if hypothetically you are relying on motivation, which you should have discipline, but you are disciplined to do things that you are motivated to do. So they do go hand in hand. But um, the way that I thought of this is if there's two different kinds of motivations and you can have both of them, that the more you have of both of them, the more likely it is that you're going to be motivated to continue doing something. You have the motivation to eat food as an extrinsic thing because, yes, you know that as a result of you eating food, you're going to live to the next day, but it's also an intrinsic thing for a lot of people too. You enjoy the process of eating food. That's how I am. I love eating food because it tastes good. I like the taste of it. And... You have to do the same thing when it comes to working out because if you just have, a lot of people just have extrinsic motivators, which is, I want to look like David Laid. I want to look like this bodybuilder or so-and-so. I want to look like this. This is my goal, reaching the goal, reaching the end goal. And an extrinsic motivator is a good thing because it gives you something to shoot for. But what happens when you don't get there and it takes a really long time to get there? You start to keep using your gas and, you know, before you know it, you're out of fuel. So... I say to have an extrinsic and intrinsic motivator, extrinsic and intrinsic motivators, because finding a way to be able to in love with the process, as well as having some kind of outside goal that you're motivated to shoot towards will help you continue being fueled. You're fueled not only by the idea or the possibility of what you could reach, but you are actually motivated by the fact that you are enjoying what you're doing. And it can be hard to sound like that or to do that at first. It can sound hard to do if you don't really enjoy it because I'm not gonna lie, like I'm genuinely, I'm not just saying this, but back in high school, um, when because I did play football in my freshman and sophomore year and they made us, they made us, lift weights. I hated lifting weights. I did not like it at all. It wasn't fun to me. It just felt painful. Like it, it wasn't fun. I didn't like it. And then eventually when I started doing it, I started going more and more and started seeing results and stuff like that. And I just started enjoying actually doing it and pushing myself. But you need to at least start trying to find things intrinsically 
so that you enjoy about the process of working out that will help you to continue wanting to do that. And then as you continue to go, if you have extrinsic motivators, so things on the outside that will come as a result of you working out, you know, your body looking better, maybe you attracting more people, maybe you just liking your self image more, um, externally, at least, um, those things are going to help you. But another really big thing to think about is if you don't like the feeling of being, you know, in pain or working out and pushing yourself, a big intrinsic motivator could be something like going with a friend, going with somebody else that maybe say you got two, your two friends that are overweight or your friend, you're overweight, your friend's scrawny, you're scrawny, your friend's overweight, you're both scrawny, whatever. Get somebody else that may be hesitant to do it as well. And um, although you maybe neither of you really know what you're doing, when you go together or do something like that where you have another person. If you don't enjoy the process of working out alone, maybe going and having a an experience of lifting and pushing yourself with another person that you really, really enjoy being around, having fun doing it, and actually doing it because you enjoy it will cause you to have that motivation to go again and again and again. And then when you both start to see results, you know, you get more motivation out of that. And it's really, really good to find an intrinsic motivator. So something in the process that you enjoy. It can be anything about you going to the gym and working out. It could be you know, the people that you meet there, if that's what kind of person you are, it could be the fact that you enjoy just doing one more rep than you did last time, even if nobody else knows, but you need to find intrinsic and extrinsic motivators. So having a general goal or a desire that you achieve, or a desired outcome that you have, um, that you can shoot towards so that you may eventually achieve, but also things that you just enjoy doing it. So that's the first thing that I have for y'all is find intrinsic and extrinsic motivators. The second thing is realize that your brain may be in subconscious denial because of your unhappiness with the state that you're currently in, causing you not to want to directly confront the problem. So um, again, and a really big thing about this is that if your brain is in a subconscious state of denial, not directly, it's going to be even more likely that you doubt this because you're going to be, I'm not in denial, you know, maybe I'm not super swole or maybe, you know, I don't go to the gym, but you know, I'm not in denial about me not looking good, but there's a big chance that subconsciously you don't push yourself to go to the gym and you don't have motivation to want to go to the gym because you see the results other people are making and may not even be that you're jealous. You may not be jealous at all, but you can be in subconscious denial which causes you to not want to face the problem. So the thing about subconscious denial is that it's you see the potential of what you could be and you don't like the fact that you aren't there or you don't like where you're at currently, which subconsciously, since it causes, I forget the word again in psychology, there's a term for it, um, but it's basically like mental distress and you don't because you don't like it. You don't like the fact that you could be somewhere better right now and you know, physically or whatever and it's discomforting it's uncomfortable to be in a state of you know looking at the fact that you could be doing better or be somewhere better looking physically wise or whatever more athletic but you're not which causes you to look away from the problem and not push yourself to do it in the first place so um it may not be super obvious if that's the case. And if that's the case, it's going to be pretty, maybe pretty difficult for you to do that. But that might be a question you need to ask yourself. Is it just, you know, I want to go to the gym, but I just don't push myself to do it because, you know, I don't like where I'm at. I truly don't. And I want to be better, but I just don't like thinking about the fact that I'm trying to ignore the fact that I don't like where I'm at. Because a lot of times people can just not want to work out or anything like that because, they don't like where they're at and they don't want to face that fact that they could be doing better. But that's just something that you have to learn to accept and that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with you being able to do better. In fact, that's a good thing. That means you can only go up from where you're at. So if you're in subconscious denial, a big thing to do is face if you're lacking motivation and that's something that you kind of want to do and you think about here and there is think, okay, you know what? Do I really want to do this? Do I? Okay. Is it because I don't really like where I'm at? Yeah. And then facing that directly and accepting it and being like, okay, I don't really like exactly where I'm at, but even if I don't look amazing, I could just look a little bit better. I could just do a little bit better, be a little bit more active, be like just feel a little bit better being active. And facing that directly by attacking the problem head on is going to be a surefire way of making sure that you are handling that properly and not just letting it linger because the more and more you ignore a problem, um, 
that has to do with you ignoring the problem, the worse and worse it's going to get. So um, that's going to be a really big one. Again, it's going to be being in a subconscious state of denial and then um, not directly confronting the whole problem, which is you not going to the gym in the first place or you not looking good enough or feeling good enough athletically, whatever. So the next thing that I have for y'all is going to be just start going learn form though. Um, So just start going is a really big one because there's different kinds of people. And it's really weird when I even think about it, because again, I didn't even really like lifting like that or anything like that. I don't exactly know exactly what it was. A lot of people have these stories. I was just, I was just this small teen or I was just extremely overweight. And then I just had this drive in me to become an animal in the gym, like whatever, like not quite for me. For me, it was more so I genuinely, I was really skinny and I just wanted to get a little bit bigger. It wasn't something super deep. It wasn't something like extremely life-changing that I immediately just started doing. It changed my whole life. It was just like, well, I'm small and skinny and I'm not in football anymore because I quit. So might as well go to the gym and just start trying to work out, even though I don't really know what I'm doing. And I did. I didn't know any workout plans. All I knew was the crap that the coaches give you, which, by the way, football coaches suck at giving workout programs in high school. Just letting you know. But I just started going. And that's all that it really takes is just going and then continually going. And But what I would highly recommend is if you really do plan on getting something out of this in the long term is trying at least to find a plan. But there's two different kinds of people. There's the kind of people who are able to be like, okay, I really want to do this. I'm not going to waste a bunch of time trying to like, you know, just wait around for the perfect moment to do it. But... I will figure out how to have proper form. I will figure out, do I want to start a workout plan, follow this YouTuber that I know, whatever. Yeah, okay, and then just get started. But there's some people who are going to sit around. So a lot of the time, the people that don't have the motivation to do it are thinking in their heads, there's this preconceived thought of like, but if I do it, I got to do this, all these different workouts and this specific workout program and the blah, blah, blah. And it's all complicated. And I just don't feel like doing all that. So, you know, if I really want to go to the gym, I just got to learn all that stuff. And then they put it off to the side, never end up doing it. And then as a result, never end up actually going to the gym. That's a big problem. So if that is your problem, again, there's two different kinds of people. Some of them can think of ahead of time what they're going to start doing, like if they're going to do a program, whatever, and then start going um, and f- after they figure that out. And then some people are going to, th- that's going to be too much for them to think about right off the bat. So if they don't know what they're doing, no one around them is going to tell them exactly how to do it, then um, the best thing for them is going to be just jumping in. So again, I want to stress, sorry, there was a fluffy in the air, but I want to stress that good form is important, especially if you're doing a squat bench and deadlift, those are important for form. You need to learn form when you're doing those properly and you're going to continue to get better. Your form is not going to be perfect right up front. But I highly suggest if you lack motivation and even trying to go to the gym that you don't try and figure it all out ahead of time. Just start going because as soon as you start going and just keep doing the same things, you know, just keep going again, um, at least pushing yourself to a decent amount, then you'll start you'll start finding things that you may like in the process of it and then eventually maybe you know go with another person or even start going with another person just going and it'll give you the ability to have some kind of accountability you're going with another person but i highly suggest just jumping in but trying your best to learn proper form it's really simple literally just go on tiktok look up um this person or whatever like literally just look up exercise exercise name form and then click on a few videos. Make sure you look at more than one and see the commonalities between them if you can, so that way you're not just relying on one person because you know nobody's perfect, but unless you find a super educated person, by the way, highly recommend Ryan Jewers, R-Y-J-E-W-E-R-S on TikTok, as well as um, TNF. I don't know if he does exactly a ton of form videos, super informative, and then another one is obviously JPG Coaching. He does really good form videos, those three. Um, I don't know exactly how much about TNF that he talks about form, but highly recommend if you are on TikTok looking up those people. I just say TikTok because it's super simple. All the videos are really short. Um, If you want to look at form for your workouts, those people. But again, just start going to the gym. Just jump in. Don't worry about getting it all perfect. Just jump straight in, start doing your workouts. Try to have good form and push yourself, and that's all. So the next thing is going to be to stay consistent long enough to see the results, or you can't allow the results to motivate you. So a big thing that's motivating people, which can be a slippery slope, again, can be, especially when you're starting and you start to see a lot of results, Um, it can be very motivating but don't let it become a slippery slope. However, there's people on the other side of things where 
they don't see any results. So it causes them to be unmotivated and causes them to give up. This is probably one of the number one most um, discouraging thing people have is not getting results. And usually if they're going consistently and still not getting results, you're not pushing yourself hard enough in your training or you're not training right, which again can always be fixed. But if you don't train long enough, so at least even consistently, like three to four days a week for like a month, you cannot expect to see results unless you have God tier genetics. There's just these people that will literally jump in the gym and hardly work out like once or twice a week, like inconsistently, and then they'll get a bunch of muscle gain from it. But a majority of people aren't gonna be like that. So you need to realize that if you really wanna see the results, even if you don't end up wanting to stick in the gym for a long, long time, just try and be consistent for a, a decent amount of time. Just a little bit. Just try. Just try it. Even if you don't like it, you can. You know what you can say? You could say, you know what? I tried to be consistent in the gym. I pushed myself and I just didn't like it. I didn't get the results I wanted and that's okay. I would say that that's much better than going and being inconsistent and then not seeing results and then quitting, which is what happens to a lot of people, unfortunately. But stay consistent. I would highly recommend going three to four times a week at least if you're just starting. Um, three to four times is probably the golden, uh, especially four. I would say four is probably the golden thing to go. You know, train your upper and lower body twice a week, maybe do some cardio here and there, whatever. But you really want to be consistent. So going every week, a few times a week for at least a month or two. And I promise you should see results if you're pushing yourself. But you're not going to see results if you don't go consistently. I can promise you that unless you have amazing, very, very, very amazing genetics, you are not going to see results without consistency and results are extremely motivating. So it's an important thing to take into account because the more results you see, the more likely it is that you're going to be like, dang, I really like this. I like what I'm seeing. I'm going to keep going. So um, make sure that you are staying consistent in order to get those results. What a break. Let me make this like an ASMR type beat. Okay, <laughs> bro, um, I don't even know what I'm doing. Okay, so the next one that I have for y'all, and the very last one is going to be accept where you are, accept where you, <laughs> accept what you are. Why did I put what? Accept what you are and what you don't like, where you're at, and that you can only go up from there. So um, this kind of goes hand in hand with the um, subconscious denial thing. Uh, is not really liking where you're at and it's a mental struggle. It's a battle. Like I don't like where I'm at, but I don't like the discomfort of accepting that I don't like where I'm at. So it's you're butting heads with yourself, but you need to accept, you know what? That's okay. It's okay. It's even better that you recognize that you don't like where you're at than to just ignore it and be like, no, I like where I'm at. I, 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 I like where I'm at when you really don't and fighting yourself. It's better to do that to just accept it. It's good to accept and to acknowledge. It's better to do that than to work out and say, no, 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 I, I like where I'm at. I'm working out for a different reason. Like, Be honest and be true to yourself in saying, I don't like where I'm at or I want to be better than where I am. And that was me. I, you know, I was fine. I was really skinny and, but I was pretty toned and athletic. However, I wanted to be better. I wanted to be more muscular. Some people would even say to me, why do you still go to the gym? You look fine where you're at. Why do you want to, why do you want to keep growing? Because I always, I want to be better. And in order to really want that, you have to accept that maybe like where you're at isn't exactly where you want to be at, but you have to accept that. Because again, denial is not good. It's going to cause mental struggle. And the second you do that, you start to learn that it's okay that you don't like where you're at. And that's perfectly fine. What matters is that you recognize that and you do something with it. So that's all the things I have for you. I'm going to go over all of them again really briefly. So the first one is going to be to be more motivated to work out is to find intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. So things about that you enjoy with the process, whether that's going with other people, um, enjoying that you're doing more reps every time, that enjoying the pump that you get whenever you're working out while pushing yourself, pushing yourself hard, and extrinsic motivators, which are things on the outside that you get as a result from doing something like whether that be you look better, you look better to other people, it makes you more confident, things that you get as a result of the thing that you are doing. So 
outside things. The next thing that I have is realize that your brain may be in, be, be in subconscious denial because of your unhappiness with the state that you're currently in, which is causing you to not want to directly confront the problem. That's that one. The next one is just start going, but try your best to learn form. The next one, stay consistent long enough to see the results or you can't allow the results to motivate you. And the very last one is accept where you are and what you don't like, where you're at, and that you can only go up from there. So that is going to be all for this video. I hope that it was helpful. Hopefully this can help you to become more motivated and go and start to be more and more consistent each time. Um, you guys have an amazing rest of your day. Don't forget to use code monkey on retaliationproject.com as well as getrawnutrition.com 10% off m-o-n-k-y that's all i need to do check out the socials i should have them up on screen follow me on there and then in the description below i have my free workout program i'm going to be starting to add um, my other ones in that's like a higher frequent or higher volume uh, push pull leg workout program for men and women um, on android and ios and what i'm going to add later on is a lower volume, higher intensity workout program. And then probably somehow I'll figure out how to give y'all my personal workout program as I'm going throughout the year so that y'all can just copy me if that's what you want to do. But anyways, be sure to check out those workout programs, try them out. Let me know how they went. Follow me on my socials. Um, and don't forget again, use code monkey at checkout. You guys, you beautiful people have an amazing day.